The Bubble Nebula is an emission nebula located in the northern constellation of Cassiopeia. The nebula lies at a distance of 7,100 to 11,000 light years from Earth. It is also known as Caldwell 11 or Sharpless 162. Its designation in the new general catalog is NGC 7635. It was nicknamed the Bubble Nebula because of its shape which was created by a strong stellar wind from a young, massive, hot wolf rayet star that shed its material to form the nebula. The star has the designations SAO-20575 and BD-602572. The bubble nebula has an apparent magnitude of 10 and is about 10 light years in diameter. The central star has a magnitude of 8.71 and a mass about 44 times that of the Sun. The star's radiation ionizes the bubble-shaped shell, causing the nebula to glow. The bubble nebula was created about 300,000 years ago when the central star expelled its shell of dust and gas. The expelled material rapidly moved away from the star, and as it interacted with the nearby molecular cloud, it began to create the nebula's bubble shape. Let's see, I'm back out again for another evening of, uh, of astrophotography. Okay, it's about uh, 4.30 in the morning right now. And uh, see, I've been imaging since uh, about 12.30. All right, the target uh, tonight is the, uh, the bubble nebula. And uh, <clears throat> it's a target that I've been wanting to image for some time. And uh, fortunately, the, uh, the weather gods uh, cooperated today. See, earlier the, uh, the forecast wasn't too promising. The forecast was calling for cloudy skies uh, with the possibility of uh, some showers. But of course, as, uh, as weather forecasts are, uh, things were updated and uh, fortunately things worked out. And uh, we had clear skies all night and everything's held up. Uh, no rain, no clouds. Uh, the seeing isn't the greatest tonight. Uh, it never is where I am. I'm in a uh, a portal 7 slash 8 uh, zone but uh, see I'm using the Optolong L Extreme filter and uh, uh, as anybody that's ever used one that lives in a light polluted area it's a godsend and uh, everything's looking so looking pretty good so far I'm planning on getting about four and a half hours worth of worth of exposure time uh, I probably could have gotten five hours but uh, I did a meridian flip around uh, around 2 a.m. and uh, that didn't quite go as planned and I probably wasted about uh, I lost about 25 minutes of exposure time but uh, no problem uh, everything's still working out pretty well on this particular target uh, I think four and a half hours uh, should yield some pretty good results so I'm looking forward to seeing exactly what I can come up with all right now I'm going to head over to uh, astrophotography tool and uh, see how, how everything's going and also check on the guiding. So, be back in a second. Exposure started. All right, let's see. Uh, now I'm in astrophotography tool and um, I'm looking at uh, one of the uh, previews from uh, one of the subs that was just taken. And uh, I have to say, uh, I'm impressed with what I'm seeing so far. Uh, if you look in the center of the screen, you can actually see the uh, the shape of the of the bubble uh, of the nebula itself, and uh, you can see the center star uh, right there. And uh, you know, it's one thing when uh, you see photographs of of these images uh, online that other people have taken, but it's an entirely different matter altogether when you actually begin imaging yourself and you're getting results that are similar to what other people are getting. Uh, it's pretty exciting and it's pretty rewarding all at the same time. All right, uh, 
Let's see, astrophotography tool is uh, performing flawlessly uh, for me like it normally does. Uh, I know some people have had uh, some complaints periodically about uh, about the software maybe shutting down, having problems, but uh, that hasn't been an issue for me. So uh, I'm happy with everything I'm getting so far. All right, so the imaging is going well. Uh, let's go over and check on the guiding. All right, uh, now I'm in a PhD2, and uh, so far the guiding is looking very good. Uh, let's see, uh, about uh, 0 0.58, 0 0.56. Uh, it's basically staying right around uh, 0 0.5. Every now and then it gets up to maybe uh, 0 0.6, but uh, uh, I'm pretty happy with this guiding. All right, I'm using, now I'm using the, uh, the Celestron CGX mount, and uh, it's performing uh, considerably better than the, uh, than the AVX, even though I have really no complaints with the AVX. But uh, the CGX has, uh, uh, has, has a bit better guiding. Now, I'm pretty sure I could get it even better if I were to uh, make some slight adjustments to the worm gear, uh, which I plan on doing, uh, because I'm pretty sure it can get even better than this. But uh, um, I'm more than satisfied with what I'm getting right now. All right, uh, at this point, I think that will do it for this video. Uh, I'd like to thank you for tuning in and watching. And uh, as always, until next time, and clear skies.